spiritual parental authority God has given me. Wow, look at the hawk. It's just sitting there. Look at it, it's just sitting in the ground. Josh, Josh, leave it alone, okay, baby? It may be hurt or something, or maybe it has babies or something. Look how big it is. As we transition to the next film, for privacy matters, this portion does include a level of spiritual warfare. So if you are triggered by spiritual warfare, that includes praying, that includes using my heavenly language, which here is a scripture that you can reference for that. So this is my private places, my private moments that I was having, not wanting to put this on display just because, but wanting you to be ignited in your heart to understand, Mom, that God has given you spiritual authority over your children. I've started actually doing a study on spiritual authority, the parental version. And one thing that I have been allowed to experience is there were moments and times where my children were buffeted, I believe, by Satan. I believe that there are moments that the enemy would send and be allowed to send terror uh, to make life a little challenging in their childhood. And when I speak of that, I'm talking about when it comes uh, to visions, dreams. Um, my children operate very heavenly in the prophetic and because of that i am more sensitive and more aware of demonic activity and particularly in this video what i want it to really target in on is the moment in time that i have been in the journey that you see of me praying but this has been maybe a week that um, one of our baby girls have been buffeted and it was getting all the way up to the climax of a mama bear uh, really coming to a determination that this spirit has no authority over my child so this particular moment, I am warring in the spirit. I am using my heavenly language, praying, crying out to God, uh, praying for protection, a covering over her anointing. And one thing I wanted you to be able to identify with this scenario is if your children are having nightmares, if your children have an anointing and they are seers, meaning they have a prophetic gift and mantle over their lives, you have to really um, help them to condition uh, to the world in a different way. And what I say is you have to cover their anointing. You have to cover because their there been gift. Many things um, because there are a lot of things that, that my, my children chil have been allowed to experience. And I understand that. The Lord has challenged me as well to study the scriptures, to make sure that I'm putting my whole heart into parenting them and doing it the Bible way, not just being religious, not 
praying three or five scriptures and saying it loud enough where the heavens could hear it, but actually walking in the manifestation of allowing the word of God to be provoked in me first, um, that I may change as I pray over uh, our seed and their seed and their seed. Um, So prayer and the mantle that God has placed on my life is very, very special to me because it comes from my mother and her mother. And um, it is just a ripple effect um, of intercessory prayer. And because of that, there have been things as a child that I've experienced. Um, I've experienced um, demonic warfare. Um, and I did not have a mentor uh, growing up to help uh, me to mature uh, in a safe way um, in knowing how to use my gift, knowing what was going on in these visions and dreams, praying and asking God for wisdom for interpretation of different visions or just keeping a journal and realizing that Everything that I'm maybe having a vision about may not take place maybe in my day and age. Maybe it may be for my children's children, but still having a heart and a heart posture to say, Lord, whatever you're trying to tell me, I want to be present. Whatever you're trying to get us, you know, to me for my children, I want to uh, be stable um, to hear it. And this particular moment means so much to me because as I am praying, as I am crying out to the Lord, I am crying out from a place of desperation because I'm already a tired mama, because I feel like, Lord, you know, why is this happening? Why is my child being um, is uh, 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 is being buffeted? Um, you know, why is fear resting? And then, you know, I was able to come to the head of the problem. I remember it was a specific day and I think it was a part of the week and I had had enough of the enemy. I had had enough. Y'all, please hear me. I was at the place of my prayer that I was like the man that brought their child to the disciples and the disciples couldn't cast out the spirit. Um, You know, and I want to also reference for you, for those of you that are trying to understand spiritual authority or maybe um, demonic presence and how you have authority over the enemy. There is a great book that I was introduced to um, early on in my faith, and it's called Pigs in the Parlor. I forgot the exact author's name. But um, there's been a lot of things over the years that I've had an opportunity to learn and be a part of that have helped condition me for moments like this. But I can remember um, the climax of the last day that I had had enough of the enemy. Um, Our baby girl, she was, I set her down. She was getting ready to eat. I had prayed over her before she sat down because whenever she sat down, she has... She had a vision um, and the vision scared her so much till she was basically trying to leap out of her high chair because um, it was just so surreal to her. So this particular moment, um, you know, I was in the kitchen. I'm trying to clean up behind the kids. You know, I'm a stay at home mom. So I still got everything going on in my day and um, I set her down. And long story short, um, after I set her down, it was maybe like a couple of minutes, um, the episode started. And so what really got my blood boiling is the fact that she was eating and she started choking on her food because, you know, she was scared of the vision that she had just had. And um, for me, that was the boiling point. I took my daughter out of the high chair and I start commanding the evil spirit that was buffeting her to leave. As I am doing this, um, and this is how I know that spiritual warfare is real. Devils are real. Angels are real. And 
for us keeping a close eye on our children, what they're watching, what they're being entertained by. Um, there can be an open door even through the parent, depending on the environment that the parent is setting uh, for that child to have peace or those children to have peace in their home. Um, and for them to be able to not only rest easy, but to just function normally, especially when they're gifted in the spirit. So this particular moment, I had had enough. I, by God's grace, started to go into spiritual warfare um, against the enemy. I called out the spirit that I believe that was behind um, a lot of the buffeting that was happening with our baby girl. And long story short, as I'm doing this, um, Kalia, basically she starts throwing up. She threw up so much. It fell on the floor and I didn't care. I continued to call the spirit for what the spirit was. And I canceled it. Um, I canceled the assignment of the enemy. And I want you to understand that mom, you have a spiritual authority. You have parental authority. God gave you those children because he entrusted you to help nurture them spiritually, physically, and mentally. There's some things that are just normal in the development of a child. A child is going to learn by God's grace how to um, suck from a mom's breast um, and breastfeeding, how to go from breastfeeding to drinking their milk from the bottle and suckling that. And, you know, then they continue to progress you know, um, with their motor skills, their fine motor skills. They continue to move, you know, from, you know, scooting maybe to crawling um, from or to walking, whatever comes natural for them because every child is different. But what I do want you to understand is we still live in a day in an age of creative miracles. We still live in a day and age that God is able to move through us as parents and I want to be uh I want to have a uh, Smith Wigglesworth anointing I don't know about y'all but I believe in heaven I believe that God is on the throne and Jesus is at the right hand of the father and he prays for us uh with intercession with groanings and moanings that can't be uttered because it's not natural it's supernatural. And I just really want to ignite a fire in your belly, in your spirit, mom. If you are experiencing fightings, arguings, um, maybe uh, at night, um, night terrors that your children are experiencing, get that oil. Plead the blood of Jesus over that house. Don't stop praying. Live a consecrated lifestyle before the Lord. So the Bible says, in the same verse of scripture that the father came to the disciples and they weren't able to cast out the devil. The Bible says that Jesus said to the disciples, you know, this is why you couldn't cast out the spirit because this kind come forth by what prayer and fasting. So living a consecrated lifestyle means something in our relationship to God. And it also sets the tone for uh, uh, the, 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 the th authority that you're able to give over your home moms, over your children, because God entrusted you with them. So he's giving you spiritual authority over them. That's why it's important for us to read our Bibles as mothers, to keep a praying, uh, 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 have a praying spirit, uh, wherever we go in the car. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I bind the hands of the enemy. Even if you, mom, you're feeling a little bit more stressed out or uneasy, just about life, having that moment to get before the Lord and pray to God, because you know that what sometimes our children are feeling are a result of our own anxieties and fears that we carry. So mom, go in peace. I hope this has blessed you the readers and doers of God's holy word.